Um, but for today, we are here for our monthly Windows on Waterloo presentation, um, and we are so excited to have Robert Smith and Bethany Botchway here from UNIQ. Um, we are in this like back to school season, and so we're excited to um, kind, kind of have an education focus this month. I think that's top of mind for a lot of us, especially if we have um, kids or family members or even just neighbors that are that are in that back to school time. And UNIQ offers um, different programs that fill some unique educational gaps in our community too. And so the work that they're doing is um, really important, really, really great for our community, and we are excited to learn more about it here today. So we hope to have time at the end of our presentation here for some question and answers. So if you have questions throughout the, throughout the presentation, you can put those into the chat box and we will address those all um, towards the end today. But with that, I will turn things over to Robert and Bethany. All right, well, thank you very much. Uh, first, let me uh, apologize if you happen to hear a train behind me. So our office is uh, here at the um, UNIQ here at the old Home Depot um, train station is where our actually office is located here at 800 Sycamore Street. So occasionally a train will come by. So if you hear noise as I'm talking, uh, I want to apologize up front for that. Um, as, as indicated, my name is Robert Smith. I'm the executive director here uh, at UNIQ. And uh, I have really, really, really been fortunate and blessed to uh, have been at UNIQ. I, I have to tell you, I never imagined uh, working here as long as I've worked. Um, I started working here at UNIQ in 1988. And I started as a recruiter. Um, uh, advisor for the Education Opportunity Center program. I'll give you a brief information about that. And, and then I thought in two years, uh, when I moved here to Waterloo, uh, my wife is from Waterloo. And so I thought I'd be here a few years and then, you know, I would move on. And man, I started working and fell in love with the work. Uh, I fell in love with serving the community, uh, being part of helping uh, first generation low income families. And so I, I just wanted to start by saying how grateful I am having been here in Waterloo. Uh, was fortunate to serve on the Waterloo Board of Education, serve on the County Board of Supervisor, uh, have been part of helping assist the United Way. And, and over the years, I've served on a number of, of uh, boards with agencies in this community. So um, it's, it's, it's really, I, I, if I had to do it all over again, I'd do the same thing. Uh, because I know many of you who are here know what I'm talking about when you're serving people. Uh, so it's really been an honor to do that. So I'll start, I uh, have Bethany to pull up our screen here. And uh, so you can get a feel for, you know, learn a few things about what we do. So as you know, UNIQ here is at 800 Sycamore Street. And uh, we're, we're over here at the Home Depot building. Uh, and then our mission uh, is fairly simple. UNIQ's mission is to provide a positive environment for lifetime learning where individuals may pursue their and continue their educational goals and prepare for careers. And that's, that's our mission. We keep it real simple. And uh, that's what we've done since I've been here uh, for 35 years. And 1969, which we'll talk, I think, on our next page here. Uh, you know, UNIQ, uh, it's committed to diversity and, and diversity to us is first generation low income families. And we realize and have realized over the years that that's going to cover uh, everybody in our community. So uh, before diversity really was a big word or a word that people were familiar with, uh, UNIQ has always been committed to diversity and diversity has always meant um, those who have historically been less fortunate or marginalized communities. And so as a component of the EOP SEC program, and what EOP SEC means is educational opportunity programs and special community services. So uh, that's what I'm actually the exec executive director of. Uh, so that's the department. And then we have UNIQ who then represents the university strong commitment to cultural diversity uh, and, and we've added inclusion, but 
simply again, first generation low income families who we've always have served since 1969. We'll go to the next page here. And then as in 69, UNIQ was founded by you and our president, James Marker, and a group of concerned African-American leaders from Waterloo. And it's the only program of its kind in Iowa with the clear goal of providing educational programs to Waterloo and the surrounding communities. UNIQ set up shop, you know, at over 19, uh, 119 Vine Street. Most people don't even realize that. That's where UNIQ actually kind of opened up its doors and uh, in the next slide here, uh, where when I came to Unicure in 1988, it was an, over on 715 East 4th Street, um, not far from East Waterloo High School. And 1974, Governor Ray, uh, when it was uh, addressed to the new Unicure facility, which was housed in its renovated grocery store. So when I first came to Unicure, that's where Unicure was located. And right now, I'm the only individual left now that even remembers being at UNIQ. So everybody else here uh, at this site here uh, is not familiar with the old UNIQ. So I'm kind of uh, the old head. So this is where we're located now. We actually have this picture up in our facility right now. That's what UNIQ looked like when, um, when I got a chance to come over here and visit and when we were thinking about uh, moving from 715 East 4th Street here. Uh, we actually moved here in April 2001. The Board of Regents approved a 10-year lease of agreement with the city of Waterloo. So the city actually owns the building. At that time, it was $75,000 a year with, the, with all of the you know, renovations. And then uh, two years ago, the university renewed the lease for a 20-year uh, contract. So you know the university is committed to the work we do. Uh, we're committed to the Waterloo community. Uh, and so I mean, I'm very excited that we were, have done what we needed to do to make sure that the community has UNIQ and the university is committed to the work we do here. I'll start here with a few of our programs. Uh, one of our programs that's been around here the longest is our educational talent search program. And it's a program that assists middle and high school students in completing um, high school, of course. Uh, it serves students uh, to, from middle school, high school, graduates who are not currently taking college courses. And, uh, and then we also work with dropouts living in the Black Hawk County. So Talent Search for Waterloo that's been serving Waterloo has been here since 1985. Our next one is our UB, our college preparatory program designed to empower program participants uh, for academic skills, motivation necessary, uh, and now this is more of a retention type program. This program actually serves 95 students. 85 of those students are served, funded by the Department of Education. 10 is, uh, we got additional funding from John Deers to serve additional 10, uh, 10 kids. And I didn't say, but the talent search program that I talked about briefly a while ago, serves 1200 students in middle school and high school in all of the middle schools and the high schools and the Waterloo Community Schools. And then we have our Education Opportunity Center program, which started in 1988. This is the program that I was hired at, uh, first funded when I got here. Uh, so I'm, I'm a little biased through ELC, although I don't uh, run that program, haven't for a while, but uh, it's the program that I got hired. This program here works with adults 19 years of age and older. Two thirds of that population serving 1,942 students. Um, and we serve other counties, not just Black Hawk County with our Education Opportunity Center program, Greenwood County, Butler County, Chickasaw County. Um, there are a number of those uh, uh, individuals that we serve. So that's the adults, but we do serve high school kids in the counties uh, that does not have our talent search program. Next one, we also have a talent search program. We now extend into the Cedar Rapids area as well. It's the same program, but we wrote and got funded another talent search program. So we actually, uh, our director and our administrative assistants located here, but our counselors are located in the Cedar Rapids school districts. And this program serves 500 kids uh, serving in the Cedar Rapids school district. So we've now expanded. We, our goal is to continue to do that. Uh, and because we've been here, we do the work 
and we thought it was a need to expand since we've uh, been doing it for, for as long as we've been doing it. And then uh, we have the math science program. Uh, it's, it's the STEM part. So we, we wrote for the math science. We have an upper bound, which is just a regular upper bound, what we call, but now we also have the math science. And that was funded in 2022. And so we've had uh, this year between both upper bound programs, we had approximately about 90 students on campus. And it's to another retention program. It serves 65 students. And the goal of this program is to make sure that students who are interested in the STEM fields, uh, we work with our campus, work with our, all of our STEM programs in the community to make sure we um, get young people interested in those areas and make sure they're exposed to it. So with that, I'll turn it over to Bethany and she can talk about the actual other programs that we have here at UNIQ. Hello, I'm Bethany Botchway. I have not been at UNIQ for 35 years like Robert. I've been here for about a year and a half, um, but it's been awesome. I love working here. Um, I love coming to work every day and I get to do a lot of cool stuff that helps the community, which is kind of what I've tried to focus my whole career around. Um, I'm newish to the Cedar Valley is what I say. I actually lived here in high school. I moved in high school, which is super fun, as you can imagine. Um, and then I moved away and went to Iowa for college, stayed there for a couple of years. And then my husband and I moved back here about five years ago. Um, I've done a lot of work in nonprofits and I also worked um, at the University of Iowa for a little bit. So I was really excited when this position opened. Um, I am the assistant director here at UNIQ. And so I run a lot of the just day-to-day -day stuff that happens. It could be that the sink is broken downstairs and I need to help get that fixed or um, the concrete's broken outside. Um, but I also did get to do some programming, which I really, really am excited about. Um, we love having community activities here. We work a lot with community partners. Um, I don't know how many people have had the opportunity to come visit us at UNIQ, but we always love having visitors. If you want a tour, it's a really cool building. Um, and we also have a lot of really great meeting spaces. Um, so community partners use our space a lot because um, we have a really big um, kind of boardroom in the back that they can come and have their annual meetings at or just different functions. So if you are ever in need of something like that, feel free to reach out to us. Um, we also hold continuing education courses here for the University of Northern Iowa from time to time. Like I said, we have a lot of classroom space. Um, so sometimes they'll hold class down here during the fall or spring semester. Um, we have our UNIQ tutoring center. You might have seen that blasted all over social media lately. We're working really hard to get tutors for that. Um, it's always a really big need. Um, something that's really neat about our tutoring center is it's free. Um, and it's for K-12 in all of Black Hawk County. So anybody who needs it can sign up for it. Um, our, volunteer, our tutors are all volunteers. Um, so that can be a little tricky sometimes to get people who volunteer their time. So if you know anybody who wants to volunteer to be a tutor, send them our way. Um, we only ask for an hour a week. Um, and we set them up with a student. So they're paired with that student the whole semester. Um, and then it's really cool just to see how that student grows throughout the semester. And, and a lot of times they make really good bonds and then they ask to work together in the spring semester also. Um, we also do an ACT prep um, program. That program used to be in person and then during COVID it went virtual and the students decided they really liked it that way. And so we hold that um, over Zoom, students can sign in um, and we just go over the different material that could be on the ACT test, um, also different test taking strategies um, and things like that. And we offer that in the fall and spring semesters. Also, um, probably my favorite thing that I get to do here at UNIQ is the UNIQ Leadership Academy. Um, that's a four week program that we hold during the summer for fifth graders, um, for students who will be exiting elementary school and going into middle school in the fall. And the goal of that program is really just to help with that transition. That's a really big jump for students. Um, and how those students get nominated is we ask fifth grade teachers to nominate students that they feel like are, are leaders or who have the potential to be leaders. Um, so they come and they hang out with us for four weeks. Um, we normally have around 24 students and we do a lot of fun stuff. Um, there is a classroom component. So they're in here with instructors doing math, reading and writing. Uh, we also work on STEM activities. 
Um, and then we, we do a lot of in the community, either that's community volunteer work or getting out um, and just doing different things in the community. One of the things that we did this year is we toured KWWL, um, or we go out to Hartman Reserve. The kids all learned how to kayak, which was really fun. And so we really just try to get out in the community and do some activities that maybe would be the first time that they got to do that. Um, a really awesome part of that program is that um, the students who are picked for that automatically get moved into our educational talent search program, like Robert talked about earlier. And then if they continue all the way through high school with that program and they're eligible for college and they want to go to UNI, then UNI will actually pay for their tuition because they were part of this leadership program. So it's kind of a big deal um, and it's a lot of fun. So that's probably my favorite part. Um, and then financial literacy classes. Um, anybody who knows Robert Smith knows financial literacy is very important to him. Um, and he has really pushed to make UNIQ have this accessible for people. Um, and so we have uh, financial literacy classes that we hold. Um, we're getting ready to start them in October. And um, individuals can come here to UNIQ and do those classes in person, or we do have them over Zoom as well. Um, they're free. Uh, we partner with Mike Finley. He's the crazy man in the pink wig, and um, he leads those classes. And it's just a lot of really great information. Uh, Robert, do you want to add anything else about that? That's kind of your baby. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, having worked with first generation low income families pretty much my whole career, um, it's, I, it's just part of it. And I, if you want to empower people, you empower their education to learn about the resources. And so it's been something I've been pushing for a long time. I've been fortunate to, uh, as a college student, uh, work at a bank, uh, when an internship, and it just opened up my eyes. And so from day one, I've been pushing this. And Mike Finley has really been a blessing for us is because he he has that passion. And so you know how it works when you run into somebody that thinks and feel in, in a certain area that you do. And then we've been able to partner up with him. And it's, it's really been great to do that. So. Um, this semester, we also had a really um, exciting opportunity. We partnered up with Mike and the Foothold Scholarship um, Committee. And along with this course, we were able to offer individuals the opportunity to apply for a scholarship. Um, and a certain amount of individuals will be chosen to um, be in that program as long as they attend um, the classes here in person for the eight-week session. They'll be eligible to get a $1,000 um, Roth IRA set up in their name because they attended the classes. So really just giving them a jump start on some of those retirement goals. So that's really exciting stuff that we do here around here at UNIQ. Um, this is just a little bit about our demographics. I won't bore you with going over the whole slide, um, but it's just really showing um, that we do really work with a, a vast variety of individuals here at UNIQ. I think sometimes people see Center for Urban Education and think it's not for them, um, but we're in Iowa, right? And so um, there's not a ton of diversity sometimes and it really is for everybody. And so we really want people to feel included and, and that's why we really post these demographics out there to show, yes, you're welcome here too, everyone's welcome. Yeah, if I can just add to that, you know, what's interesting that, you know, I'm originally from Texas, Dallas, Texas. And reason why Bethany is one of my favorite hires, she's a graduate of Iowa. I, 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 I love you and I because I've been employed here for 35 years, uh, but I'm a graduate of Iowa and a few of you may know me personally, but I play college football and track there. So um, urban to me is different than urban here from Texas. And I, I, it's, it's been interesting in my whole career how oftentimes people think that UNIQ just serves people of color and it is so misleading. And that's why I've always, you know, these numbers are reported through our TRIO programs and we, we, we record numbers here, but we want people, if there's one thing, uh, those of you who are here or will hear this, is that UNIQ is for everybody. It's first generation low income, most of our programs, two thirds will serve that population, but one third income is not a factor. If an individual is interested in pursuing higher learning, we help all people. And so I think oftentimes over the years, I, I will still get people often to ask me and say, well, does UNIQ just serve, you know, the Black community? And I'm like, well, wh where would you get that from? Uh, but 
I think the urban kind of throws people off. <laughs> that, that's the only thing conclusion I can come to. But as you can see, the numbers speaks for itself. We serve everybody. So help us help people understand that whoever is interested in pursuing an education, getting help with FAFSA, scholarships, we help everybody. So that's one of the reasons why we really like to make these numbers available so people can, for whatever reason, uh, get into their mindset that everybody is welcome and always have been in the 35 years I've been here. Um, and these next two slides are just kind of showing some of the partnerships that we have. So this is the middle and high schools that we work with. We do primarily work with the Waterloo Community Schools with most of our grants. Um, and now the Cedar Rapids School District with our Educational Talent Search um, grant. But our Educational Opportunity Center, which Robert started his career at, as you can see over in the other participating um, districts, we're really all over the place. They're in seven counties. Um, and we're able to work with high school students there as they don't have the opportunity to be a part of an educational talent search program. Um, and so we're out there and we're helping them fill out college applications. Um, some cool stuff that they started to do last year is we started taking some of these students to college visits. So they were loading all these um, students from these different districts up on buses and taking them to UNI or to the University of Iowa and getting those college visits in, which is a great opportunity for those students also. Um, and this last slide is the UNICU partnerships. As you can see, we work with a lot of different nonprofit organizations um, here in town. A lot of times it's giving them opportunities to work in our rooms or working closely um, with them, sending referrals back and forth. Um, and really, we just want to show this to you as letting you know that we're open to anything that you guys need help with as well. Um, that's a big part of UNICU is just how can we help this community and um, so anything that you guys need, feel free to reach out. We'd love to find a way to connect. Questions? I know we kind of went through it fairly quick, but I've, I've always felt it's probably easier to answer questions than there is to just keep putting up PowerPoint slides. Absolutely. So if anybody has questions, feel free to put those into the chat and we'll pass those on to Robert and Bethany. Um, kind of to start off with, questions here guys can you talk a little bit how are students finding your programs are like counselors referring kids or is it just word of mouth or kind of how how is how are community members finding you so in our schools so the talent search upper bound programs our counselors actually have space located in the schools so they go there pretty much during the day and so they have access to the students working very closely with the counseling staff teachers so they're they're there, so they don't have to necessarily come here. They'll come to afternoon programs like the tutoring or when they're having weekend projects, things going on. But usually uh, they're in the, in the schools, middle schools, high schools, working with the kids. So that's a contract, an agreement we have with the Waterloo Public Schools since I've been here. That's how TRIO is set up. And then our EOC program, the one that works with the non-traditional population, 19 years and older. So they reach out and sometimes agencies allow individuals to come in and talk uh, to the people who are using their services or work with the agency. So, um, and then obviously word of mouth, people will refer people to us and then we'll fit them into one of our programs. But yes, we have, because we've been around a long time, we're pretty usually set, and uh, but we're always looking for other agencies to partner with to be able to provide resources and information to individuals out there who can use the work and the services we do. Oh, that's awesome. Um, it was fun, too, to hear about some of the programs that you've implemented kind of to meet changing needs and, and different um, ways that our community has evolved and, and that kind of thing, like with the math and science upward bound program and things like that. What would you say are some of the biggest changes your programming has kind of needed to adapt to in our community over time? I mean, you've, you've been there a long time, Robert, so you probably <laughs> could have a whole laundry list, but um, what are some of the biggest kind of ways that you've had to evolve your programming over time? Technology. <laughs> Communicating with students, they they communicate different. Uh, you know, Facebook, uh, Twitter. I mean, it's just 
they just they 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 do things different. Uh, and so we've really had to kind of change how we do our outreach. You know, now we have Zoom. We have, you know, it's just the technology has really changed how we go about reaching students, keeping students engaged. Uh, and so it's been good for those of us who've been around for a while, too, because uh, we, we have to make those changes in, in, in order to be effective in working with. So I would clearly say uh, the biggest thing has been technology uh, and and one that I have pushed, uh, as Bethany talked about earlier, it's the financial literacy piece. Uh, UniQ was unique in that we really started talking about, I wrote an editorial probably 20 years ago about default to student loans. So right here at UniQ, we saw uh, an issue way before people ever started talking about default to student loans because working with the non-traditional population, we started seeing people coming in was stuck because of default to student loans. And it was before, and we actually introduced it to the national uh, COE uh, at the national level. And I wrote an editorial in our national newsletter about default to student loans. And so it's interesting now to see how student loans is talked about all over the country. And I, I give our, our, our staff a lot of credit. Uh, Rachel Clayton at that time, she's no longer here, but years ago she came to me and says, I think we need to start paying attention to default to student loans. And I'm like, well, we don't do that. Why would we care about it? And uh, she she kept pushing and she wouldn't let it go. And we started looking into that. And uh, so I take a lot of pride that UniQ really is kind of, was the head of talking about default to student loans. So that's changed. And that really triggered me with the financial literacy piece because I then realized that, you know, it's one thing to help people get a good education, but it's another thing to help them learn how to manage the resources so that they can live a productive life. You know, Q, since my time working here too, really does a really good job of listening to the community. Um, that's part of where I think our math science program came from. I mean, we have John Deere here. We have multiple hospitals. We have a lot of STEM type jobs here in the community. Um, and so that's, um, been really helpful to have that program. We also were hosting STEM days here, um, and it was getting a lot of love from the students. They really enjoyed coming. So that kind of just seemed like a natural progression um, to be able to write for that grant also. And I think um, Robert would say too, with Cedar Rapids, um, he's worked a lot with Cedar Rapids um, through his officiating career and also just um, with different things with UniQ. And he saw that a program like we have here with Waterloo Schools would be definitely beneficial down there also. And so, you know, we're always open to listening to the community on what the community needs um, to see if there's a way that we can help in that way. Absolutely. Robert, can you talk a little bit more about, because I, yeah, like you said, student loans have become kind of this big conversation. Can you talk a little bit more about what defaulted student loans are and how that impacts students and, and that kind of thing? Well, yes. I mean, you know, there's a lot of, you know, things going on about it, whether it's going to be, you know, they don't have to pay it, but most will still have to pay. Uh, I think there's a lot of information out there, but it really does squeeze a lot of families uh, from being able to uh, take advantage of their education because that debt, you can't bankrupt. It, it doesn't go away. It, that, and, and I think we're starting to do a better job in our society. And uh, a lot of students, uh, some of you probably can relate to this, you know, were borrowing money, they probably shouldn't have been borrowing when they were in school. And now they have to pay it back. Uh, it didn't go away. And I, I don't think our institutions, and I mean this nationally, did a very good job of um, helping students manage that debt. Uh, I think students, they just, it was there, they took it. Uh, I've even heard individuals who work here who have student debt says they could should have just went home, but they could borrow the money and live in the summer and now they got to pay it back. Uh, so I think that's really the, the biggest challenge uh, is uh, you got some people sitting with a six figure loan. I mean, those are house mortgages that people will have to pay back for the rest of their lives if they didn't end up working where they can get a lot of that uh, loan forgiven. 
So I think probably more now uh, than ever is to help people learn how to navigate that uh, and how to negotiate their loans, what interest rates they're paying, uh, monthly payments. So we really try to dig into that uh, to try to make sure we're providing that assistance to individuals. Uh, and we've, we've done a very good job. I take a lot of pride. You and I is really one of the universities that does a great job and, and, and gets a lot of credit and should for helping students not go into debt. And I can't remember the percentage of how many of our students graduate from the University of Northern Iowa with a four-year degree able to get out and not uh, go into as much debt. So I know Northern Iowa is one of the universities throughout the nation that does a very good job in working with our student population and not taking on debt. Robert, do you wanna talk a little bit about our scholarships too and just our scholarship help with students? In general, yeah, yeah we, we've had a number of individuals uh, come um, and provide resources for scholarships. Uh, we have probably a little over five hundred thousand dollars total uh, of our scholarships that we provide to our trio uh, students, and uh, we've had individuals to step up. Uh, probably within the last three years, we've had a couple of individuals uh, to give over a hundred thousand dollars. Uh, to and that pretty much we kind of set it up how we wanted to set it up, and uh, they were okay with how we set it up, and so we're we're helping students, and that's part of helping them uh, reduce that debt uh, when they get ready to go to school because you know some of them don't have the 4.0 grade point average; they have the 3.1, 2.8, but they they're going to need help because they're not going to get as much. Uh, scholarship money as the students who achieve at the highest level. So we, we have a number of uh, opportunities, and, and that's that's one of the goals too. I want to try to raise more money to help more families be able to help with that burden uh, when they go to school and still feel like uh, college education is still affordable. And we help a lot of students go to Hawkeye Community College. So I, we're funded by the Department of Education with our TRIO program, sponsored by the University of Northern Iowa. But we help any individuals go anywhere in the country that we can get the best deal for individuals. We're not required to have to send them to UNI, although you know we definitely expose them to UNI's campus and, and try to keep as many of them locally as we can. But we certainly will do what we can, what's best for the individuals and what their skill set, what they're interested in. Absolutely. That's, that's great. Thank you for uh, speaking to that kind of um, higher, zooming out a little bit on, on an issue like that. Um, we had a question come in that says, we're seeing a drop in high school graduation rates in our community. How does UNIQ adapt to these trends or track outcomes of students involved in programming? Yeah, I mean, we do a lot of creative things that we're, we're, we're doing. Uh, we just did a quietly school supply I think, um, and we're just really trying to get to a lot of, I have a wonderful staff. Uh, several of the individuals are from Waterloo. Uh, and so they, they help us a lot figure out creative ways to get the young people uh, where we lack, reason why we started the fifth grade leadership academy program, I started at about 13, 14 years ago. It's really, it's in the elementary. It's where we really got to figure out how to get to a lot of young people uh, early on. And so we're still trying to figure out ways in which we can do that and support our elementary schools. Our TRIO grants, you know, starts middle school, high school. But I think where we're losing a lot of young people, we're losing them by the time they get to third grade. That's really the key. Uh, and, and trying to keep them engaged. Uh, and so one of my goals, and I've, I, I, I really would like to figure out a better way to reach down into the elementary levels and help with the reading and writing of students. Because regardless of how much technology we got, what I've learned is if they can grasp the concept of reading and writing, they got a shot. And where we lose a lot of young people is that when they don't grasp that, by the time they get to fifth and sixth grade, that's when the behavior problems begin to start. 
It's because if I can't read and write, I'd, I'd rather be known for something else than for people not to know I know how to read and write. So uh, before I retire, I, I really would like to try to figure out a way to get a reading and writing program uh, for summers to just concentrate on teaching the kids that basic concept. Because I remember as a youngster, once I got comfortable with reading and writing, then everything opened up for me. Uh, because when I was really young, early, I struggled there. But once I got, I figured that out, then I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, it wasn't just about being a student athlete. It was also reading and writing. So I don't think that's changed, even though we're years ahead uh, in terms of generations. Somehow we got to be able to support our Waterloo Community Schools and getting our young people to read and write. We do that. I think we're going to change that trend tremendously. What are some of the other uh, most common like barriers or challenges that you're seeing students facing um, as they go through some of those middle and high school years? Well, families not having enough money. A lot of kids you be amazed, they, 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 they want to work. They, they, you know, rather than take advantage of programming and coming, they're more focused on finding a job because their families need help. So they feel like I got to go and work whether it's $15 an hour. So I, I've seen a trend that, you know, so, you know, we have some stipends that we're able to provide for kids in the summer programs and upper bound programs. We about almost have to provide stipends for $500 stipends or $600 stipends, because if you don't, they're, 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 they're probably not going to want to participate in the summer programs because they, they want to go try to find work uh, so they can have schools closed and buy whatever young people buy today. So that's really the challenge. Uh, I think for this community, we've got to figure out a way to um, help kids get some stipends in the summer so they can focus on the things that can help them be productive adults in life because they're focused on working and they're, lo they're losing a lot of things that they probably could take advantage of. But if families are struggling, they're going to try to do what they can. Unfortunately, sometimes it's illegal stuff. Uh, because if they can't read and write and they, they don't know how to do basic stuff, a lot of kids tend to go the, the wrong direction. And then, you know, we pay for that as a society and as a community as well, because we got to figure out a way to, to get them engaged. Bethany, were you going to add something? I, I thought maybe I saw you. It was just going back to the... Um... The tracking, just uh, the graduation rates, that's really a big part of the TRIO grants, the Educational Talent Search and the Upward Bounds that are in um, the schools. That's a part of our grant requirements is to be tracking those things. Um, and, and that's what the counselors are doing. They're, they're meeting with those students in the schools and making sure they're up, signing up for the classes they need to be. A, a big part of our grants too is that we're encouraging a rigorous schedule for our students. Um, so that if they want to go to Iowa or Iowa State or UNI, there are requirements um, that are different than other colleges to go to. And so that's a big part of that tracking as well um, for the students that we're able to serve. Absolutely. As our community and our school district has seen um, different kind of a, a growing immigrant and refugee population, but also kind of different waves of um, larger groups coming from from various countries at at different times. Have you seen um, a changing demographic at all as as that has occurred? And what kinds of I mean, do you have those cultural and language challenges and and yeah, or or maybe those populations aren't interacting with your programming at this time? I don't know. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, we're doing I tell you what, we do much better when our when our staff reflects that. At the end of the day, uh, your staff has to reflect what it, what it is who you're trying to serve. And you know, we have two Latinos we've hired in the last few years, Hector and Ruth. Uh, they're, they're, they speak Spanish, they're Latinx. Uh, and it's amazing uh, when families come in, students come in, they're able to help translate that. Uh, 
um, a lot of, she's from Ukraine. I heard her, uh, she's been wonderful. I mean, so I, I'm intentional uh, because I realized that uh, there, there's only so much I can do with certain populations, but until they get to know me, trust me. Um, so I'm very intentional. If you looked at our staff, it, it's, I try to make sure uh, we reflect who we're trying to serve. Uh, because I think when you do that, then, then when people walk in Unicube, um, they need to be able to feel like there's somebody I can connect with. Um, and so what I can tell you is when our when the staff reflects, that's what starts to come. It, it's just, you know, that's just, I've learned that when you've been somewhere 35 years, you kind of learn. I'm like, you know, we're missing this. And, you know, we, we hire people who qualified, who's passionate. Um, so I'm not going to hire somebody just because, but I do try to make the effort that if there's a certain population I'm trying to serve, it's important, I think, to try to find somebody who can relate to that community. And then we allow them to go, hey, go help us do that and show us how to do that. And, you know, I'm not going to try to be the expert uh, in, a, in, a, in a community that I'm not as familiar with. So that's up and down. But if our staff reflect it, that population starts to come. We've learned that. That's great. How can our community best support the work that you guys are doing? Well, hey, just um, get the word out what we do, for one. Uh, help us get the word out. Uh, we serve all students, all ethnic backgrounds, gender. It doesn't matter. Um, our goal, and Bethany will tell you this, um, working with me, uh, I have been fortunate that this community has allowed me to have a voice. Um, and I feel an obligation to pay for it. And so those of you who are passionate, who want to um, do for others, then help us. We, we want to help you. Uh, that's why a friend of mine, uh, Stacey Bentley, who I have the utmost respect for, she uh, she works over Community Bank and Trust. You know, I got involved with United Way because of her, uh, because I know the kind of person she is. So it's always about the people you get to know. Uh, I just, oh, there she is. She just popped in my screen. So, uh, it, you know, it's, it's really about the people uh, that I've had the fortunate to run into over the years that has helped keep me passionate. And, and people who come work here at UNICU, they, they, they have to believe it or they're not gonna like being here. <laughs> this is not a fun place to work if you're not about doing what's right for people. It's just not a fun person. I mean, it's just not a good place to work. So help us tell people about the work we do uh, and resources you have that's available. We wanna know about it so that we can make sure we get people, we get, on average, anywhere from 15, 17,000 people have come through UNICU. Uh, and so we get a lot of people to come here. We just try to make sure we know how to get them to the places they need to go to to get the help they need. Awesome. Very good. Well, thank you both so much for taking time today to share about your programs and your work in the community with us. We're so grateful to have um, these kinds of resources available to anybody. That, that's a great clarifier for all of us too. Um, but yeah, we're, we're just really grateful for the opportunities that um, you and your staff are providing for students here um, and, and meeting so many, such a diverse and vast population with, um, with the tools and resources that can really help them take next steps. And so, um, we're grateful for you guys and for your passion for this work and for our um, students of all ages, too. Um, we're just, we're glad you're here. But <laughs> uh, well, thank you for inviting Bethany and I just to come and talk and talk about the work we do. We, we don't consider it work. We, we consider it a, a passion and uh, we love doing it. Thank you for asking us. Absolutely. Absolutely. And thank you so much to everybody who joined us today, too, to hear more about UNICU. 
Um, we have been recording this presentation, so we'll be sending that out via email. Um, it's also available on social media if you would like to share with um, anybody else in your circle. We always appreciate that. And we host these presentations on the first Wednesday of every month at 11 o'clock. So we'll be back on Wednesday, October 4th. We will have um, some staff from Friends of the Family joining us to talk about um, kind of the overall topic of homelessness, what that looks like in our community, um, the challenges people are facing here locally. I know that we've seen lots in the news um, about homelessness across our country and what that looks like. So they're really going to focus in on um, how that's affecting people here in Waterloo and some uh, neat programming that they have in place to, to serve people who are who are facing that and um, helping them find stability. So we are excited to have that in October. Keep an eye out for um, the usual emails and communications about that. But otherwise, I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of your day and a wonderful September. Thank you so much for joining us. All right. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.